Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where I give you all of the latest gaming news. And well, today we got some good news as well as some really weird news. That quote unquote revolutionary announcement by Sega wasn't all that revolutionary after all, though it may actually be a really big deal over in Japan. So we're going to talk about that and also Sega kind of trolling everybody. Also, Xbox Game Pass is an amazing service, and I think most of us could come to agree on that, and it looks like it may get even bigger as it's expanding over to TVs. That means in the future, you may not even need an Xbox or a gaming rig to play Xbox Game Pass, which could turn out to be a huge step for gaming. So don't go anywhere just yet because we will talk about all that as well. First though, let's go over some of the quick news and I'm actually going to start off with Sega because we have talked a lot about Sega over the last week and really the entire game community has been buzzing over what Sega was going to announce this week. And if you don't know the entire story behind this, a journalist by the name of Zinji Nishikawa was teasing last week that he got a revolutionary scoop in the next issue of Famitsu that was as big as the Wired article last year that revealed the first details of the PlayStation 5. So obviously the community will take notice to this and there was a lot of rumors floating around, but the fact is this really doesn't sound all that revolutionary after all. And the community is kind of upset about this now. And this is something I said last week was that it could be a hype piece for more views, but I don't think that's necessarily the case either. And I will explain why. So Sega did announce two different things yesterday. The one that most of you probably already know about is the Sega Game Gear Micro, which was announced for Japan. And no, this was not the revolutionary announcement. However, we did talk about a handheld like device patent yesterday on Newsdose, so this may actually be linked to that patent. I'm not entirely sure, but this is a really strange announcement. I'm not against a Game Gear device being released per se because the Game Gear was a really cool handheld when it released back in 1990, but this is a micro version and I don't really see how you can play anything on this device. And that is where this announcement gets even more strange. So Sega knows you're not going to be able to play on this thing the way it's made, but if you do want to play on the Game Gear Micro, they are selling a separate product which basically acts as a magnifying glass so you can see what's on the screen as you play. Obviously, this doesn't fix the tiny buttons, but if you thought this story ends there, well, no, it doesn't. So there are four different colors of the Game Gear Micro, which is no big deal until you figure out that each color has separate games. Yeah, that's right. In order to get all of the Game Gear Micro games, you will need to buy four separate devices. I really don't know what Sega was thinking here, honestly. It was almost as if they decided, well, they have the technology to do this thing, so why not? Whether they should have made it, though, is in an entirely different story. But I will ask you, do you have any interest in buying the Game Gear Micro if it comes over to the West in the future? I mean, collectors may like this stuff, so who knows? For me, though, I would have much preferred a regular sized Game Gear. I would have bought that, but I'm not really too sure on the Game Gear Micro. As for the revolutionary announcement though, and this is really not gaining a lot of traction as most people seem to think that the Game Gear Micro was that announcement, it actually wasn't because the big announcement is that Sega announced something called Fog Gaming. This will be a new technology that can divert CPU and GPU power of their arcade machines for other purposes. This essentially will turn their arcades into server farms and allow arcades to make more money outside of business hours. Consumers outside of Japan are obviously not going to care about this announcement too much. To be fair though, that actually is a big deal over in Japan because arcades are absolutely huge there. If these arcades can make more money outside of business hours, that is a big deal in the Japanese game industry. So it was revolutionary to an extent, but not outside of Japan. I guess this is a lesson to all of us though. Famitsu is a Japanese outlet, so they are going to view things different from the rest of the world. So we may need to approach hype announcements from them going forward. Moving on though, we have a few different delays. Both Call of Duty Warzone's new season and the upcoming CD Projekt Red event for Cyberpunk 2077 has unfortunately been delayed. This is for the same reason that Sony delayed the PlayStation 5 event and different publishers are speaking out right now and saying they want to give voice to this very important movement instead of taking headlines away from it. We talked about this a little bit on Monday, but do expect this trend to continue for a little while more. 
Sony and Activision has not given a new time frame yet for a new date, but CD Projekt Red is expected to show Cyberpunk 2077 on June 25th, so just a short two week delay from its original date. But we could see more delays in the next week or so. Now hopefully they won't be delayed for too long, much like Cyberpunk 2077, but we're definitely going to have to play this one by ear. In other news, and yes we do have some good news here as well, it's just been one of those weeks I suppose, but yeah, Elite Dangerous is getting a huge expansion by the name of Odyssey. So the thing about Elite Dangerous is that people either love that game or find it incredibly boring. It is more or less a space simulator where you fly around space, and because of how realistic it is, it can often feel a bit empty just flying around until you see somebody. Now though, Elite Dangerous is expanding its combat to on foot. Yeah, that's right, you will now be able to walk around on planets, which includes on foot combat. That is a huge expansion, and I think that will bring a lot of people back to Elite Dangerous, which was already great for what it was. There however is not an official launch date just yet for Elite Dangerous Odyssey, but it is expected to release in early 2021. With that said though, let's move on over to the Xbox news and we have some exciting stuff here to talk about and this has a ton of potential to expand gaming and the Xbox brand in a major way. So Xbox and Samsung has had a pretty good relationship with one another for quite a while now and that's not anything new but now apparently Xbox Game Pass will be coming over to Samsung TVs through Samsung Access. Samsung Access will be a subscription service that bundles select Samsung TVs with premium content services that includes Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. What does that mean though? Will you actually be able to play Xbox Game Pass Ultimate games on your TV without the need for an Xbox console? As of this moment, that does not seem to be the case, or at least when Samsung Access first launches. For the time being, you will just get the Xbox Game Pass subscription if you subscribe to Samsung Access, but that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Why would Samsung include a service like Xbox Game Pass if they have to buy extra hardware to play it? Well, that's because Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Game Streaming Service, xCloud, will be paired together in the future. xCloud, of course, allows you to stream Xbox games to other devices such as your phone or in this case, a Samsung TV. And you may be asking, where did I get that news? Well, from head of Xbox himself, Phil Spencer, which did confirm back in the month of May that once Project xCloud goes beyond beta, that they will offer a streaming option for Xbox Game Pass members. So there it is. He has already confirmed that Xbox Game Pass and Project xCloud will be bundled together in the future. Now we don't know much beyond that and if it will cost extra or not, but for the time being do expect in the future that you will be able to stream your Xbox Game Pass library to other devices such as Samsung TVs. That is a big move as well and probably much bigger than what people realize. Xbox Game Pass has already eclipsed 10 million subscriptions and I expect that number to really explode once Xbox Series X releases. I think pretty much everybody who buys the Series X will have Xbox Game Pass. Microsoft probably will bundle the Series X with at least a one month subscription of Xbox Game Pass, so that number will grow quite a bit with the Series X launch. But then if everybody who has a phone can play Game Pass as well, that's huge. But not everybody wants to play on a phone and may rather play on TV. And Samsung looks to be the first partner to do so. Now technically they aren't saying that this includes xCloud just yet, but I do expect that will be the case. But let's put this into a different perspective. I was reading an article the other day about how Roku devices are increasing dramatically and they forecast 80 million active accounts by 2025. Roku of course is used to stream different services such as Netflix. But what if Xbox Game Pass went to something like Roku and then you could play Xbox Game Pass through Project xCloud on your Roku? That means not only would you be able to play Xbox Game Pass on the tens of millions of Xbox consoles, but then you would have access to 80 million Roku accounts and how many ever TVs carry Xbox Game Pass such as Samsung, and then you have phones and computers that aren't even meant for gaming as well. I mean, you're talking about expanding to hundreds of millions of devices worldwide. That has a ton of potential and we have already seen the incredible deal that Xbox Game Pass is. 
that would be very enticing for anybody to just go pick up. I mean, you don't even have to have a console to play Xbox Game Pass. Of course, though, Xbox hardware is still incredibly important as well, as Phil Spencer has said over and over again. So don't take this as they're getting out of console business. That's just not true. The best place to play will always be on a local device, as Phil Spencer has said, but streaming does have a lot of potential to expand gaming further. And that's why companies like Xbox and PlayStation are investing into game streaming through the cloud. The fact that Xbox Game Pass is just such a good deal though, it's just a brilliant move to pair the two together in the future. With that said though, we do have one more quick Xbox update, and that is that the Xbox Series X will be launching in Japan this year of 2020. That's really good news because with the Xbox One, they did not do that. I think it was like six months or even a year after it launched in the United States that it came to Japan. In a recent interview, it doesn't really sound like Japanese developers and publishers were too happy about that either. It's just all the more reason that the Xbox One has really struggled in Japan this generation. As we all know though, Team Xbox has really been emphasizing how they want to do better there and get more Japanese games not just for Japan, but for consumers worldwide. So by them launching in Japan in 2020 rather than like a year later is great news and should affect us worldwide. If Xbox can improve their relationship with these Japanese publishers and developers, that could mean that worldwide we get more Japanese games on Xbox. So that is why this is important because they do make great games and if you want them on Xbox, you need better support from Xbox in Japan. It's just that simple, so hopefully Xbox does improve over their next generation. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to do bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Peace out.